Chairman, thank you to our witnesses. Thank you as well for your work on this exceptionally important issue. Uh, I have to tell you in this day and age, I'm amazed at the number of American companies that are still looking to China uh, to do manufacturing after all the intellectual property that they have stolen, after their immense human rights record and what they have done. And I'm particularly astounded with the number of American companies uh, that will boycott states in the United States or will make public statements about different things, but have no problem doing business in China who has one of the worst human rights records in the world, who limits free press, uh, who takes away any right to vote uh, for any individual of a meaningful way uh, in China, who does surveillance laws uh, on their people, who violated their word with Hong Kong, uh, who said basically Hong Kong will have some sort of autonomy until 2047, and then when it wasn't convenient, they just broke their word on that and consumed Hong Kong with their surveillance networks. Uh, who does forced abortions on individuals and limits the number of children that families can have, who limits free access to faith, free access to the free press, free access to assembly. All of those things are common in China, not to mention uh, in the uh, uh, prison camps of the Uyghurs uh, and of the multitude of other issues that they've done, as we've talked about economically today. Uh, so there are serious issues with any company that's doing business in China and needs to be clear eyed uh, on the real risks of having a communist government be your partner for your business. Uh, it needs to be very clear for American companies that are well are going to speak ill of America, but seem to have no problem uh, with engaging in China and the things that the Chinese government does there. Uh, so I would encourage companies to be able to be awake uh, as they deal with interaction with China. Saying all that, there are a billion people there. There are a lot of companies that want to do business with a billion people uh, and are engaged in that process. Uh, so I want to be able to talk through some of the things that China is doing that we need to pay attention to. And I'd like to be able to start with rare earth minerals and critical minerals. Uh, China has been very strategic in trying to be able to isolate the critical minerals uh, market and rare earth minerals. We have quite frankly allowed them by limiting production of critical minerals here in the United States and have just exported that uh, work to uh, China to be able to manage. Uh, now we are behind the eight ball in many ways. Uh, on trying to be able to catch up on those critical minerals that are needed for solar panels, for batteries, for steel production, uh, for so many items in our cell phones, everything else. Uh, so let me ask uh, Mr. Williams in this, do you have ideas on the critical mineral side and things that we can continue to do to be able to catch up and be able to level the playing field that we've abdicated to China? Uh, thank you, Senator, and uh, I appreciate all of your remarks. I will say on, on critical minerals, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion in this administration. They have a supply chain um, executive order where they're looking at this. I think we're all looking forward to the recommendations. One thing I will say though, if we're serious about this, I really do think that permitting um, and, and being able to, to um, obtain these minerals in the United States, it's gotta be a core part of that. And I understand that some have environmental concerns about that, but we need to figure out a way uh, that we can do it in the environmentally friendly way in the United States, because otherwise, I think we are tying our hands behind our back. Uh, we can't just subsidize our way out of this. I also would really look at partnerships with other countries. Australia is a country who has done a lot of work in this area, and I think we should use that, le look at leveraging institutions like the Development Finance Corporation to have joint partnerships and projects with Australia. So those are two ideas that I would put into the mix and I very much look forward to the results of the of the uh, Biden administration's review. Yeah, I, I uh, Senator, go ahead, Senator. If I could just add quickly, uh, the NDAA uh, that uh, yeah, Congress passed just, uh, I guess, a veto override earlier this year, included a new provision that would work that would expand rare earth mineral uh, utilization by DOD from mines to magnets. Prior to that the uh, DOD was required to procure products, uh, the final products from an allied country essentially, but allowed Chinese rare earth minerals to be able to be the underlying uh, uh, basis. Uh, the new provision should help get those four US-based mines back online. It's gonna take a bit of time, uh, but we need to do that with investments as well as broader provisions. Would, would completely agree. Mr. Williams, I want to follow up on a WTO question with you as well. China uh, talks about how they're co-equal to the United States and they're another world superpower until it comes to WTO. And then suddenly they shrink back and say, we're a developing poor country and uh, we need extra subsidies and we don't need to pay our fair share in. What reforms need to be done to WTO? Because China has an outsized influence in that and a veto in any of this, in any of this dialogue. Uh, there are a lot of reforms that may, need to be done at the WTO. 
Um, I have a, a paper that I wrote on this. I'd, I'd love to share that with you and, and talk through it with you. I know we're almost out of time, but I will say to your point, uh, the developing country status issue is right at the top of the list. Um, if China claims that it is a co-equal partner in the global community uh, with the United States, it needs to treat itself like one at the WTL. And we need to have objective criteria that says, given the significant size and power of their economy, they got to take on every single commitment that the United States does. It's not fair to do it otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.